Hello, my name is Mark Sommerfeld. We're going to be demonstrating this little tool called the Easy Set. And the gentleman I'm going to have demonstrate it for you does a very good job. He's been working with me the last 12 years at the woodworking shows. You've probably seen him. Uh, he does a very good job, I feel. That's why he's going to be showing you how to, to demonstrate this. Uh, the way we met was about 27 years ago when I was teaching school, high school. Uh, he was a little freshman. And he picked out a very challenging project and uh, way above his head. And uh, you, you, you got to know how it ended up. It ended up, ended up very well. So I couldn't give him a very good grade. But uh, the, the, that little kid has turned into a, a, a great co-worker for us. And uh, he has turned into turning in one heck of a grade for us today. So uh, he's going to come out. His name is Craig Langle. And he will show you how this little tool works. Like Mark said, my name is Craig Langle. I've been with Summerfelt Tools for 12 years now. I'm going to show you how to use our new Easy Set here today in our shop. The first bit I'm going to show you how to set up is our 45 degree lock miter. That's one of the hardest bits to set up in your router table. It's this bit right here. This router bit right here is what's, what are you going to use to make your 90 degree corners on furniture pieces or wherever you have to join two pieces of wood together to get a perfect grain match around the corner. And I'll show you how to set this up using our easy set. The first bit I'm going to show you how to set up is our 45 degree lock miter bit. Now the first time you use your easy set, always turn the easy set to the left to where the arrow and the star line up. Then you just simply dial it to the desired thickness of stock you happen to be using. Each one of these notches is going to raise or lower your easy set 128th of an inch. A nice thing to have is a digital calipers so you can dial in and get your thickness set just perfect. You can see right here our stock is set right at 3 quarters of an inch here. So we're going to take that easy set, dial it to the star, dial it right to 3 quarter, and set the height of that bit. Simply drop that lock miter into your router. lock it into place. You have your easy set set right to three quarters of an inch. Come over here to the lock miter profile. You want the flat part of that lock miter bit to line up with the flat of the easy set. And you just simply raise your router up. Just slide that over just to where, see how you're just making you just want that to slide right over top, just like that. Now your height is set perfectly on that lock miter bit. Simply lock the height of your router, and you're ready to set your fence. To set the fence of your lock miter bit, Our fence works on a pivot system. You just simply slide the fence over, drop it right into the pivot point, and swing the fence over. Now you want to make this in several cuts. You don't want to take everything out in one pass. So I'm just going to swing my fence over and lock it down. You want the top edge of this router bit to line up with the top edge of your stock right here. So just swing your fence over and line that up. A lot of times I just set the stock right on the back side of the fence, simply just line that up and clamp it into place. But we're going to make this in a series of cuts, so I'm going to slide my fence over a little bit more and lock it in. We have our fence set up for our first pass on our lock miter. Now when you're doing a lock miter, one piece goes flat, running through, the second piece runs through on its edge. We always use a push block to push those pieces through. So I'm going to run these first pieces through on our table. Right there's our first pass, and you can see we're not even close to that edge yet, so we have to move that fence over. We want this angle right here to line up right with the edge of our stock. 
So we're going to scoot our fence over a little bit more and make our second pass. <laughs> Again, you can see right here, see how that angle is getting a little closer right to that edge. We'll slide our fence over and I'll show you what you want that edge to look like. You can see right here, you see all that point? comes right to the edge of our wood. You see where that's flat there? That way when you put these two pieces together, you're gonna to have a perfect 90 degree corner. that final pass on that 45 degree lock miter and you can see those two pieces are going to go right together now and make that perfect 90 degree corner for that piece of furniture you're going to be making and if you've ever set up a lock miter before in your shop you know how frustrating that is to set the heights up and everything we just did it so easily using this easy set it takes all the guesswork out of setting the height of that bit because that's one of the hardest bits you're ever going to set up in your shop the next bit I'm going to show you how to set up with our easy set is our 22 and a half degree lock miter bit. I'll show you that next. I'm gonna show you how to use our 22 and a half degree lock miter set now. Our 22 and a half degree lock miter is for doing angled clips on your base cabinets and upper cabinets whenever you wanna have a clipped corner on your cabinetry. It's a two bit set. It's gonna do your female and your male part of your joint. You always set the male cutter in first come over to the profile on your easy set and set your height take your caliper come in here and set your height you can see it's set at 13 16 that's the thickness of my stock simply take your easy set back to the star dial it right to 13 16 and set the height of that bit so i'm going to come in here lock this bit into height drop in my ring and set the height of that bit. Taking that easy set, just slide it in, and simply raise that bit. Get it right to where it fits the profile of our easy set. You can see right there. Right there I have my height set. Now I can simply swing my fence in and set, the, set my fence up to make that cut. Just like on the 45 degree lock miter, you wanna make sure the edge of that cutter is gonna run right along the edge of that board right here. So you want that to be a nice sharp corner. If you take off too much, you'll get snipe on the end of your board. If you take off too little, you'll see a flat spot. So I'm gonna run this stock through and make these cuts. Now we're ready to run that through. You can see, when you, sight, when you see, that, see that edge of your fence, the edge of the board and the edge of the bit line up to give you that perfect corner right in there. That's how you know if your fence is set up correctly. Okay, right there is the first cut on our 22 and a half degree lock miter. We're going to change the bit out now and put the other bit on to put the matching piece on here to make that angle. Okay, we've switched the cutters out. Now we can make the matching cut. Again, just go right up to the fence, make sure your table's clean, and run that through. Up on the fence. See that cut? we just made for our 22 and a half degree lock. 
Now those two pieces can go right together now and you just made that 22 and a half degree lock joint. All right, right now we have our reverse glue joints bit locked into our router. Again, that profile for the reverse glue joint is on our easy set. The thickness of the stock that I'm using is 29 30 seconds. So I simply take that easy set again, dial it back to the star, dial it right to the thickness of my stock. Each one of those notches is 128th of an inch. Set that right onto our table and set the height of that bit. Come in here and get that profile set. Perfect in there. And then lock your height. Okay, now we can set the fence up on this bit. Now like all these bits, they don't have a bearing. So you have to line the farthest cutting edge of that bit up with the edge of your fence. If you set your fence too far, you're going to get sniped. If you don't set it far enough, you're going to leave a square edge on there and your board simply will not go together. So we're going to swing our fence over, drop it into the pivot point, set that board up against the fence, swing the bit out, and simply eyeball that over to get that in line. I'm pretty close right there. Now I'm ready to run these pieces through. With the reverse glue joint, you always run one piece with the good side up, the next piece has the good side down because you have to flip these two pieces to join them together. So you got to flip that piece over and join those two together. Now you can see right here I don't have my fence back far enough because you see how the joints aren't making tight. See how you have that gap right here in the front. That tells you that your fence is not far enough back. So I can slide my fence back and get this to where that's a nice tight joint. So simply loosen up your fence. I'm going to move it just a little bit farther back and run these pieces through again. When you do this, make sure you put your pieces the correct way to run through. Those two pieces are going to go right together now and be perfectly flat on the top. That's how you'd set up a reverse glue joint using our easy set. We now have the drawer lock bit locked up into our router. I'm going to set the drawer lock height using our easy set. Now again, the drawer lock is a unique bit. No matter what thickness of stock you're using, you never change the height of the bit, whether you're using three-quarter stock, five-eighths stock, Whatever thickness, you never change the height. So to, change, to set the height of the drawer lock, you always draw, dial your easy set all the way back to the star, come over here to the drawer lock profile, and set the height of that bit. Just lower that bit down. Line up that profile, get it set right where you need it, and lock the height. Now I can swing the fence over and set the fence up. The easy set's gonna help you set the height. You have to gauge your fence by simply moving the fence over to get your fence set for the correct thickness of your stock. Okay, we have the height of that bit set up. Our next step is to set the fence. Now, again, this bit does not have a bearing. So it's always best to take a shallow cut first so you know exactly where to set that fence. So I come in here and I just eyeball right down my fence and I slide my fence over just to where I'm covering my carbide up and lock it into place. When you're doing a drawer lock, you always run the front and back of your drawers flat. Your sides go through vertically. Always use a push block to run those through also. So I'm gonna run this through my table. Front and back are flat.
Now, when you put these two together, you see how that side sticks out farther than the front and back here. That tells me that my fence has to move back because you're going to want these joints to be flush right here. So I'm going to scoop my fence back a little bit more and run those through again. You can see right there how those two pieces are going to go right together. You have that nice square corner and your joints are going to fit nice and tight here. Now remember when I said you could use this bit on any thickness of stock. Right here is a piece of three quarter. You can see how the difference in the thickness is in here. I'm going to run this piece of three quarter through. And even though this is a piece of three quarter, that 5 8 side is going to snap right inside here and it's going to still have a nice flat corner and your joints still fit. Now the reason you would want to do this, let's say if you want to do a overlay door, you would simply just move your fence back and run this piece through again to make this tongue longer. how much longer that tongue is. Now you can take your side, insert it, and you now have an overhang for an overlay drawer. That's how you would set up a drawer lock bit using our easy set. Okay, our next bit we're going to set up is our cope cutter from our door making set. When you're building a door, you always start out with the cope cutting bit. So I'm going to drop that cope cutter into our router and simply lock it into place. Put in the ring and set the height of that bit using our easy set. Again, the thickness of my stock is going to be 13 16 so I'm going to take that easy set back to the star, dial it to 13 16 come here to the raised panel coat profile, set it on the table, and set the height of that bit. Just get the bottom of that top cutter, line that up with the top of the easy set and your height is set and you can lock it. Now this bit has a bearing on it so I can simply just swing my fence over, pull that insert out, drop in my second insert swing the fence over, drop it into the pivot Take a straight edge, get right onto the bearing, and my fence is set. Whenever you're making a cope cut or any part of a door, always run the good side down. So with the good side down, I'm ready to push that through using a push block. Up onto the fence. Right there are the copes on my top and bottom rail of my door. With our sets being matched, I can go ahead, swing my fence out of the way, remove this cope cutter, and drop in my pattern bit. Take the pattern bit, drop it into the router, and lock it. We don't need to use the easy set for this to set the height because all of our door making sets are matched for height. Swing the fence back right into the pivot, straight edge onto that bearing, and run those pieces through. Again, remember, always the good side, always down.
right there is the corner of my door. The next bit we're going to use to set up is our panel cutter from our set to make that panel for in that door. Okay, we've installed our panel cutter from our door making set. Even though in our door making sets the style and rail and the panel cutter are all the same height, it's a good idea to check your height using your easy set in case you forgot to make a part and you've moved your router up and down. You can simply take that easy set, set on 13 sixteenths, slide it in. You want the top of that easy set to line up with the bottom of your back cutter on your panel cut. Now I have the small bearing in here. I'm going to make that panel cut in two passes. We're going to simply swing the fence out, remove that insert from our fence. Table and fence come with three of those inserts. Drop it right into the pivot, straight edge onto the bearing, and line that up. Now we're taking out way too much material to take this in one pass, so I'm going to scoop my fence over and only take half the material out on that panel cut this first pass. With this being a larger diameter bit, we need to turn the speed of that router down to around